Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Unleashing Potentials podcast. Today's special guest is Dante. Dante, how are you? Doing well. How's it going? I'm fantastic. Tired, but I'm crawling. (laughs) We'll get you some coffee after this. (laughs) Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, So Dante, why don't you start by telling us who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So my name is Dante. I am based out of Denver, Colorado, and I created and run a business called Opuis. And so what Opuis is, is kind of a twofold organization. It stands for an opportunity for you is an opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. And I'll circle back to that towards the end of the conversation because I have to kind of build the momentum of what we do strategically every day and how we build it and then kind of what our, our true purpose and mission is. Mm-hmm. So Opuis is a technology and energy advisor. We help organizations from, you know, one user all the way to, you know, thousands of users nationwide find the best software and energy services for their business, right? We do th- so through a platform kind of like Amazon. You can go on and you can search for the type of tool you're looking for and you can see side-by-side comparisons, with reviews and videos and ratings, right? Just like you do with Amazon. And if you see what you like, you click and buy. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you need additional help, the secondary way we go to market is through more of an executive consultation approach, right? So we've got software, uh, cloud engineers and specialists nationwide that will sit down and evaluate what you're doing as a business, see where you're at today and where you want to go tomorrow, right? And so the, the best analogy I use is kind of like an insurance broker, uh, you know, here in America, we have insurance brokers and they sit down with you and they say, okay, you're 37 years old, you're a single male and you want to retire at X age. So this is what you're going to need to do to strategically get you there. Mm-hmm. Right. And so they kind of take where you're at, build a portfolio around that, get you to your strategic visions and goals. And then later on, like you'll do check-ins and sometimes you kind of change your plan. Right. And so that's what we do for businesses, because what ends up happening for a lot of organizations is They buy a tool because they either just heard of it through a friend or they saw a commercial for it, some kind of advertisement online, and they buy it. And it might not be the best tool that they actually need for their business, for integrations, for where they're at with resources, for where they're trying to go in the future, right? And so I think all of us can, you know, understand the buyer's remorse and understand what it's like to buy the wrong thing the first time around. Um, And so we simplify that buying process. We also simplify the management process of it. So the portal itself, you can see your utilization rates. So you can see, hey, I've got 300 licenses of Microsoft. We're only using 250. So we're immediately seeing uh, cost savings and waste. And also you can see that if a a part of your organization's purchase something, uh, so you don't repurchase it because it happens all the time. I mean, I've, I've had it happen with solo entrepreneurs. They're like, I bought Adobe and I forgot that I did. And then I turned around six months later and I bought another license. So they're double paying, right? Mm -hmm. So these types of inefficiencies are really driving businesses to, uh, you know, lose a lot of money, lose a lot of flexibility, things like that. So our, our organization finds a single billing console. So you get one bill instead of, getting charged by Adobe and QuickBooks and, and Ring Central and Zoom, right? Instead of getting multiple bills, you get one. You also have one support module, right? So we're simplifying the way things are done for businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the really important part to write, to understand, right? Because on the front end, we're helping businesses scale quicker. We're helping them build through efficiencies, right? Technology is everything. Um, and it's only going to continue to get bigger and bigger with machine learning, AI, all kinds of you know advanced concepts, right? And so what we've done is we went out and got certifications from the federal, state, and local government uh, to satisfy diversity requirements. So, you know, before the filming, you and I were talking about my multi-ethnic background, right? And so uh, you know, we are a minority owned business, we're a hub zone owned business, things like that. So when an organization wants to satisfy their diversity, equity, and inclusion plans, when they purchase through us, they already do that, right? So on the front end, they satisfy the requirements. Now on the back end, this is where Opuis comes in. We take a portion of everything that we fund and do, and we reinvest that into BIPOC, veteran, and women-based businesses, right? So the opportunity for you is an opportunity for us. And the big picture of what we're doing is creating a cyclical and closed loop economy of creating generational wealth for different business owners, right? Because as everybody knows, your access is everything, your access to networking, your access to capital, things like that. There's a lot of super smart people that maybe don't have the chance, never really got the the, the mentorship, never really got the opportunity to meet with people. Um, and I found that was really important because, you know, for me, 
I come from very humble beginnings, you know, single mother household, you know, we were homeless for a little bit. I'm the first person in my family to graduate high school and go straight to college. You know, so my story is, you know, not different than a lot of other people's stories. The difference is full of piss and vinegar. You know, I fought my way to get into to where I'm at, right? Um, you know, part of that lies in, you know, probably deep trauma responses to, you know, try to have to show up in the world, right? And be told that you're you're really nothing your entire life. So, you know, it kind of puts a chip on your shoulder to make sure, you know, that you do, you know, your very best out there, right? And so what I wanted to do was to create a pathway for people to create generational wealth in my community, create generational wealth, you know, nationwide that would have normally not gotten the opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I love what you do. Uh, this is a bit out of my field, but I'm open <laughs> to learning more. <laughs> sure, sure. I know nothing about businesses and, and everything you just shared, but I, I love learning uh, the stuff that you're doing. Um, so what was the impact that the pandemic had on small businesses or businesses in general, in your opinion? Yeah. So, I mean, the impact for, I'll kind of start at a personal level and then go to the bigger thing for the impact for me personally, was it pushed me to start the business. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in corporate America, right. I climbed the ladder as hard as I could, as far as I could. Mm -hmm. And I got laid off twice, once in February. And then once again in November. And at that point I said, screw it. You know, uh, there's no loyalty here. Uh, I've been wanting to start this business since 2015. And if I don't do it now, I might die and never, you know, get to realize what my my true dream is, my true desire is, right? And so for me on a personal level, it really pushed me to go past my comfort zone, my fear zone. Uh, so on a personal level, that's what, you know, the pandemic did for me and it allowed me to create this business, right? Mm -hmm. And within this, right, uh, we're helping businesses scale. So when you look at the pandemic, uh, a couple of things happen, right? A lot of people like myself either left the workforce because they wanted to do their own thing. A lot of people also died, right? So we had a reduction in, in workforce, you know, personnel. The other part of it is it, you know, put huge strains on how people operate, uh, when they operate, supply chain and logistics. I worked in supply chain and logistics during the the pandemic. You know, as a side note, I I started two businesses. One was, uh, you know, medical sales. And so I was dealing with supply chains at a very advanced level, you know. We're, you know, we're having phone calls with Malaysia, with Taiwan, with, you know, late night, you know, conversations, getting, you know, lots of COVID tests and masks and gloves here to the United States to, to fill, mm -hmm. you know, the supply and demand, right, and get real true product because there was a lot of fraud. Uh, so for businesses, what it did, right, is it it stunted their growth in a lot of different ways, right? It was hard for even and especially the small businesses to survive. You're still seeing the impact of it, at least here in America, you know, we've got really high costs because of the things that happened during that point. There's still a lot of inventory lack. Um, there's still a lot of employment deficiencies, right? And so through technology, we're able to satisfy and move and help things actually, uh, you know, become better, right? Uh, whether it's IoT, which stands for Internet of Things Sensors, where you can track inventory and you can make sure that, you know, your produce stays at the optimal cold level or the, 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 the building that you're in is like energy efficient, things like that. Um, but it's also automating certain processes because there are certain employees that left the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so you can use technology to replicate and to build out these processes even stronger, faster, better. And so that's what I love doing with businesses every day is making them more efficient, right? And people only know what they know. Um, you know, the cool thing about what we do, right, is it's helping peel back the uh, the layers of, of the onion and peel back the layers of ego, right? And, you know, a lot of times we'll approach a, a company and they're like, you know, we're good. We don't need help. And, you know, the reality is, is I've never stumbled upon a business that was 100% efficient, right? Uh, and I don't think that you really can get there, but you can get a lot closer, right? And so that's what we do is we just... We help organizations scale that, you know, you have like a lack of employees that have a lack of processes that have, you know, a lack of uh, different types of efficiencies. We can do that, replace that with technology. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was going to ask, what are your thoughts on AI? There's lots of AI pictures and I love it. I don't, you do? I absolutely love it. Uh, you know, I feel <laughs> bad for, for, you know, artists that aren't able to capture, you know, a lot of, you know, the, the revenue that could come through it. And there is, there are definitely some dark sides to everything we do. Um, 
and I'm, you know, working with some people in the blockchain community, um, you know, shout out to my friends over at Parallel World. You know, we're really creating ways for people to take advantage and to get paid off of AI and things like that. For small businesses, I just wrote a post about it today, right? It's the best way to scale. It's the best way to create emails. It's the best way to create copy, right? Like not everybody is a, it is a, a wordsmith. Not everybody's great at graphic design, but with AI, it can become a leveled playing field, right? You can start playing with the bigger organizations. So what I say to everybody is lean into it, right? Don't be afraid of it. Uh, the people that fear the change are the ones that either get on the uh, you know train too late or never get on at all. Uh, the, you know, the analogy I use is the music industry, right? You look at what happened with the music industry, like 20, 30 years ago, Napster came in, people wanted to download illegal music. The, the music industry fought that tooth and nail. Everybody wanted that. They were fighting what the progress was. And so what ended up happening was people, the people spoke, they wanted their music, how they wanted it. And then Apple owned music for a very long time, right? The record labels weren't making as much money. The artists weren't making as much money because Apple was the distribution agent, right? They were getting it on your iPad. You were getting it on your, your iPhone, your iPod, all these things, right? And so now that's shifted to streaming. You know, you look at SoundCloud, you look at Spotify, right? It's digital. So for the people that are fighting AI, for the people that are afraid of it, you need to really look at and evaluate how you can use it for your business. And I think every business can use it. Honestly, there is a fraction of it. It doesn't matter what you do that can help you simplify what you're doing as an organization. Yeah. Yeah. How, how can you um, help those who's from an older generation in the 1930s or twenties, everything you just mentioned, no one would understand <laughs> like AI and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If someone's from that generation, they've had a business, but because of, change in culture and products and they've had to for forcefully evolve uh as a person also their business how would you help them uh do that uh so they would book a consultation call with me right and so where we kind of start off is taking an evaluation of their business as it is today kind of like a health check you go to a doctor yeah. see where you're at today where you want to go tomorrow what things need to be fixed and evaluated right so um, it depends on their aptitude for technology. They might be able to take it on themselves. It might mean that they need to hire somebody to manage that. Could be a firm like Opus. It could be a you know a local person that they that they know that's you know good with technology. But um, it's really understanding how tapped into and what your strengths are. Not everybody can do everything, right? <laughs> I'm not a ballet dancer because I cannot. <laughs> so if I needed that in my business, terrible analogy, but funny thing to picture, right? Me in a tutu. Uh, <laughs> the thing about it is, is like, yeah. I don't do that. And I would never claim to do that. So I would hire somebody to do that, right? Or if there was some kind of automated process to do it, and I needed that for, you know, my business, that's, that's exactly what it would take to get to that next level. Yeah. Right. I'd be able to put the ego aside and be like, this is not me. I'm going to get somebody to do it right and not fight it. Mm -hmm. People that fight it, like I said, are going to find themselves in a mm -hmm. world of hurt because this is moving fast before, you know, you had years, you had months, you had, you know, weeks to kind of catch up. Now it's really it's you have days, mm -hmm. you have you have days, maybe even hours to catch up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which reminds me, you know, I've been trying to build a website for the podcast. I am not a techie person. I don't understand the structure of it the meaning of it, why a mailing list and all of that. So I will have to hire someone to help me. Yeah. Let I'm me know. I mean, know. I've got a, I've got a whole <laughs> team of development, you know, we do application development, web development in house here at Opus. So that's definitely something that we might be able to help you with, or some of your listeners with, because, mm -hmm. you know, same, right. I, I, I know the fundamentals of it. I know kind of how it works at a high level, but that's why I built a team out that does, you know, development straight up application software, mm -hmm you know, websites, because that's not my forte, but it is something that's important for the technological and, you know, advancement of all businesses. Mm -hmm. Would you say that your services are affordable? Because oh, yeah. some companies, I look on their websites and I'm done. Like, I can't afford this. Mm -hmm. Is it for yeah. everybody? So we really cater to the small end business all the way up to the enterprise business. You know, our marketplace where you can go and find and buy all the, you know, tools and application, that's that's 100% free. Anyone could go to opus, opuous.com slash marketplace and sign up today. Mm -hmm. And it is complimentary and free. 
your licenses to the software that you buy are the same price and in some cases lower than if you bought them direct from the manufacturer because mm -hmm. we aggregate pricing models, right? So you might be a one user shop, but we have hundreds of thousands of licenses nationwide. And so therefore our buying power is better. Mm -hmm. And so we can help the small businesses. If you want to hire us on as a retainer, our lowest retainer fee is $50 a month. That's nothing. Okay. If you buy a star, if you buy a, you know, a couple <laughs> Starbucks coffees or uh, you got Tim Hortons up there, right? Uh, I think that's the coffee shop again. Uh, you know, if you buy a couple of cups of coffee a week, there you go. You already spent $50 mm -hmm. and, you know, just making your business more efficient is, is better, right? From a consultative, uh, you know, approach, you don't have the money to have an IT team, but with Opuis, you now do, you've been able to scale. So we've got a freemium model. We've got a low cost entry model. You know, you get a, a complimentary, you know, a couple of calls uh, a week. We always do a one hour evaluation to start out. Just get the lay of the land. Where are you? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, and build you a roadmap. We give you the roadmap. You can take that and go do with it, whatever. But if you want to continue the, you know, the path to growing your business, we help you do that. Mm -hmm. As far as development services and things like that. Yeah. Very affordable. You know, it really kind of depends. Those are, those are, those are custom build outs, right? We have a, uh, we don't have like, okay, you're $500 flat, right? Something like that, because everybody's desire for their website's a little bit different and we want to build them right. Not just kind of put a stamp out there, right? Like where they're all the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, why is it important to continue to have diversity throughout different businesses? I'm hoping all businesses. Totally. I mean, that's why I, you know, part of the reason why I started Opus, right. Is I heard a lot of people talking about diversity, but not really doing it. So I wanted to make it easy for businesses to do it. They're already going to buy internet. They're already going to buy phones, cybersecurity, yeah. whatever. And so now they get to satisfy diversity. And then I also double down on that as a personal goal in, in view to make sure that diversity happens in the business world. Why is it important? Well, because the world is diverse. Yeah. You know, you look out your doorway, you look to your left and your right, nobody is the same person, even if they were the same gender or color, or if they were born in the same country, they're not the same people, right? So being able to build out a business with agility is key to be able to have voices and representation is key. I mean, hell, I remember, you know, being a kid and, uh, you know, I not seeing people that, you know, might like might have not looked like me in certain elements of, of culture and TV, how important that is, right? To even just see someone that looks like you, that acts like you, that feels like you, that it could be in a power position or have some kind of influence is, is it means everything, uh, you know, especially as we're building out a, a bigger, better world. You know, we talked about you being a single parent, uh, you know, I, a single father, right, is, uh, you know, teaching our kids that, you can go forth and you can do these things, but sometimes you got to see somebody that looks like you that's doing it. Mm -hmm. Without that, it kind of seems a little bit like a fairy tale. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. And sometimes we may see people that are doing what we want to do, but they're not, they're not us. They're not pursuing our dreams for us. They're mm -hmm. just uh, an inspiration for us to fulfill our destiny, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Right? Because there are lots of other black women who have podcasts or they may know do they have my story and then maybe it's similar. Right. And um, yeah. Why do you think it's important for us to remain authentic uh, within our businesses or brand? Uh, you know, they say people buy from people who like, you know, you and, and people, right. So to be authentic is key. Uh, you know, there's a million businesses out there that might do something similar or exactly the same. Um, and I think it's important to kind of go back to that diversity thing and also kind of just talk about authenticity to what I say, vote with your dollar, right? So I patronize businesses that, uh, you know, stand up for equality uh, that have, you know, social responsibility that have eco responsibility. Like that's where I spend my time and my money. I've spent lots of time protesting, writing our Congress people here in the U S but really at the end of the day, money drives everything, uh, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's the reality of the situation. Right. And so, uh, you know, putting your money where your mouth is and being authentic is, is really truly the most important thing, right? I might not be for everybody. Somebody might be listening to this podcast and say, look, I don't agree with that guy. And I don't, I don't like the way he speaks, but you know what? I honestly, I really don't <laughs> care. I don't yeah, because yeah. I live in an abundance mindset there for every person that doesn't like me. There's 10 people that do. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time, you know, healing through therapy and stuff like that. I was a people pleaser for a very long time mm-hmm. and living an unauthentic life. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I'm at a spot in my life where, you know, it found, sounds callous, but I don't care. You know, like if you don't like, <laughs> me, if you don't like me, that's all right. Not everybody does. And I don't like everybody either. Yeah. You know, it just, is, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I'm at, to be honest. You know, yeah. we can't please everybody. No, yeah. it's exhausting. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Can you touch a little bit on copyright and legal stuff? Because YouTube drives me nuts. Okay. Because I try to add um, with Canva, I pay for Canva, like a little mm-hmm. intro clip before episodes and then after saying, thank you for watching. And then I try to upload it and they're saying there's copyright issues. I'm like, where is it coming from if I'm paying for what I'm using? So what are your thoughts and experience with that? Yeah. So uh, the way that I've kind of, I don't want to say like gotten around it, right, is, you know, like one of uh, a long time ago when I first started my own YouTube channel, uh, you know, I got hit with copyright laws because the intro to one of my videos was Michael Jackson Thriller. It was around Halloween time and I (laughs) wanted to, you know, like intro it with a song. I love like, and the whole thing about it was, was like, if you, it's all about being in harmony and sync. If you look at the Michael Jackson thriller video, when they jump up, you could yep. draw a straight line on the bottom of their feet. And everybody <laughs> is at the same exact level. There is no yeah. very, because yeah. they had practiced so much, they were in harmony, they were in sync. Right. And so that's was the reason why I started using that. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously YouTube took it down and was like, you know, <laughs> this ain't your song. You can't use that. Yeah. Um, so what I had to do is write a little, like, you know, kind of caveat at the bottom saying like, I don't own this music. This, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't profit off of this music. You know, I had to do a little uh, statement. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you can go to my YouTube channel, Dante's Information, download and and Mm -hmm. look at that that, uh, video. It was Mm -hmm. probably like six years ago when I made that or something. Um, And see the statement that I had to make to do for copyright. But as far as, uh, you know, creating net new content, right, is, um, you know, I just Google and, and look up like royalty free whatever, like royalty free intro for a podcast, royalty free music um, is a a good way to kind of start that, right? Because as a small business, you know, a solo woman entrepreneur starting a podcast, right? You don't have the money to to pay a composer to create you a brand new, you know, song that is 100% (laughs) owned by you. Uh, You know, the other thing is you could try to go on to like Fiverr and other kinds of, you know, kind of crowdsourcing type of, uh, you know, freelance sites as well. Mm -hmm. You run the risk because you never really know. So I say for that type of stuff, go to, you know, Google royalty free and then whatever you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard about Fiverr. Here's my issue Mm -hmm. because of so much hacking. I'm not too familiar with technology that much. I don't want to hand my information to people I don't know. It's a fear I have and I want to overcome it, but I have a reason for that. What are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I totally get what you, where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, I use, if I ever need like kind of what I would call like virtual assistant kind of work like that, like Fiverr type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I use a site that's like fully vetted. They, they background check and, and test all their people. And I can share that information with you and your viewers as well. Uh, that way they can safely scale their business because that is a, uh, you know, look, I've got burned in the past. I I used a, <laughs> yeah. I used a, a site and it was a bunch of, uh, you know, people that were out in India that built a, you know, website and I ended up getting, you know, scammed. I, that website still doesn't operate properly to this day and they fought me tooth and nail and I lost a lot of money doing it, you know, and it's, it's, it's a tale as old as time. So, you know, I can definitely share with the viewers uh, for as many successes as I've had, I've had, you know, probably three to four times more failures. Wow. Um, you know, and the real reality of it is, is the perspective, right? Like I don't want to, you know, necessarily call them failures or losses. Right. I, and I don't want to spiritual bypass it either, but I call them lessons. Right. Yeah, lessons. But I tell, I teach my son, I was like, you know, he plays baseball competitively. Mm-hmm. We don't have losses. We have lessons. Whenever his team quote unquote loses, I say, okay, well, what's the lesson that you learned? What could you do better next time? Right. Like how could you, uh, you know, spend a little bit more time practicing or whatever. Same thing with business. How next time I was like, okay, what could I do better? 
-hmm. How can I find a better resource, right? Or or protect my data better, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's my issue. (laughs) It's trust, right? Because it's easy for people to hack these days, you know? What I find on YouTube, on 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 my phone, on Google, I search um, tutoring program for my daughter, and I'm on Facebook and I'm seeing the same company's name, and then I went on my Instagram, I'm like the same company's name. And then I went back to YouTube, there was an ad popped up from the same company. I'm like, what? How are they able to track and use my all of my accounts with the exact thing I searched? That, retargeting that was, yeah yeah, yeah retargeting it. campaigns for for marketing is uh, uh whoever that company is they have a really smart marketing policy because you know it takes on average 10 times to sell to somebody before they buy right so you know in that case they've already hit you four to five times you know they start becoming kind of in your evoked set in your mm-hmm. in your brain and what you're thinking and mm-hmm. uh you know stuff like that and so they're, they're very clever for sure yeah you, I don't like commercials. I've never watched them. So they're, they're gonna, they're not gonna get through me. <laughs> I just don't, I know, I know the purpose of it. I just don't do it. And, yeah. and how do people know that companies or businesses are, are true to what they're advertising or selling? Uh, You know, check your, you know, do your research, check your history, right. Uh, behind it, you know, see what people are saying, reviews and all that stuff. The cool thing about the internet, right. The cool thing about what we're, we're living in, in the age of information is everything is readily available for you. If you know what you're looking for and how to find it, you can find the truth. It totally, pardon me, totally, totally, totally exists out there. Yeah. Um. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, you know, back then when I watched those old movies, people are writing letters and it's taking a week or two to get to them. And they wrote it by hand, by the way. And then I can grab my phone on, the, on my laptop. Within seconds, someone gets a letter or email from me. Yep. Yep, definitely. So check, the, check those Yelp reviews, Google reviews. <laughs> Uh, you know, clutch, there's lots of, there's lots of places where you can find this information and find the truth on a company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you faced over the term of your career and what you do? Uh, Yeah. I mean, so social barriers are a big thing, right? Uh, That's part of the reason why I started Opus and it's still something that I experience today. Uh, you know, monetary barriers are a big one. Starting a business is is expensive. It can be expensive, right? Depending on what kind of business you're trying to start and whatever. But regardless, it's going to cost a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, you know, and so that's kind of the biggest one that I I can say, right? Is I'm at a place in in my business where I need to grow to that next level and scale, but that's going to take more capital than what's coming in currently, right? But uh, you know, kind of convincing a a lending arm or convincing an investor to do that is difficult, right? And so to see what they look for, and and I've had tons and tons of conversations with different types of investment groups and all that stuff, and and some of them have different specifications, and you're never really going to know what they're looking for and what they want, and then also what they're going to want in return. So you know, starting the business is definitely hard with the money thing, obviously finding time to do it. Um, you know, I started this off as a side hustle. I started this off on the side, but the problem is, is if you want to do something fully and completely, you have to commit to it. We all know that it's something that is a reality. So, you know, what I tell people is, uh, one of my favorite sayings that I use all the time that I came up with is manifestation without perspiration stays in your imagination. Oh. It's not enough to, to think about something, right? You got to take action. You got to put in that perspiration. You got to put in that work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so not everybody has freedom of time to do that, but you got to find the pockets of time to do that, you know, and, and make a little bit of money mm-hmm. and then maybe reinvest that into a virtual assistant and then make a little bit more money and then reinvest that into a, a technology automation thing, right? So you can get to a point to where your business is making enough money and is enough scale to it to where you can step away from your day job, right? And focus a little bit more on that. And so it's a delicate balance, right? Not everything is going to happen the way you want it to. Not everything is going to happen in the time that you think it's going to. Uh, but, you know, it sounds pretty woo woo, uh, you know, but <laughs> everything, everything happens for a reason and it happens when it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And so it's always really important to just try to not, 
uh, get yourself down and to to not really take those losses as hard as you will. It's okay to lick your wounds. It's okay to be sad for a little bit, but don't live there. Yeah. You know, you got you to gotta move forward. If you really, truly believe in anything, anything, it doesn't even have to be business. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to keep it moving. I talked about my son playing baseball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to practice. If you want to be a great baseball player, <laughs> yeah. I want to see you out in that grass every day. And you asked me to play catch with you and I'll play catch with you. You know, you, you these are the things that you have to do. You know, you got to practice in different ways, you know, find things that you can do in your day to day. You have 10 minutes, do a drill, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's putting the time because for me, people ask, where do I find the time to do a podcast and being a stay at home mom single with all those stuff? I'm like, I make time and it, I find it yeah. fascinating that every single one of us get the same amount of time. It could be a different country, but we know what time is. And some of us do so little with it. And some yeah. of us, some of us, we move mountains. We're just committed and we sweat and we just get it done. I stay away from the people that say that they don't have the time. That means they don't <laughs> have the, they don't, have, they don't, have, they don't have the care that, you know, I have a, a, I have a friend that's like, it just, she was like, I don't even know how you do all the things that you do. Like it, it just boggles my mind. And I was like, it's just a, like, for me, I look at efficiency. If I'm, you know, riding the bus, uh, you know, I'm, that means I'm not driving. So then I can sit there in my notebook and write down ideas, or I can send out an email or I can create a social media post or whatever. It's just finding the pockets of time that exist, mm -hmm. you know, and not doing something else with that, you know, and like, uh, <laughs> it all gets done. Eventually you just prioritize and stack rank and you go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Also um, in your business, you help women. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say thank you because women need the help, not only from men, but other women and other businesses as well. Why is it important for you to help us? <laughs> uh, you know, look, it's social capital, right? Like um, women are very powerful, very strong. You know, I came from originally a single mother household, right? So I got to see the struggles of what that can mean. Um, and understand the socioeconomic barriers that exist in this world. I have social capital. I'm a male, you know, like, so I have, I have credibility and clout that, you know, without even having to do certain things. And I acknowledge that, you know, it's not my fault that I was born a guy, but uh, it is my responsibility to use it, you know, for, for good and, and to leverage what I can when I'm doing it. Right. Uh, and I think that everybody has that responsibility for me personally, I think that everybody can be a little bit more responsible in what they're doing in their community and for their fellow people, right? Mm -hmm. But I live in an abundance mind state. I know that if I help you, that has nothing to do with me, right? It's not going to take away from what I'm doing because now you're making money or you're, you know, I've connected you to a certain party, um, you know, that can help you get to that next level, et cetera. Um, but you know, I'm just built different. I care, <laughs> you know, I'm a very empathetic, <laughs> I'm a very empathetic person. I'm somebody who like, uh, you know, energy is really important to me. Like in certain situations, I'll leave a room. Cause I'm like, yo, your energy just <laughs> does not make me feel yeah. good in my body. And so like, mm -hmm. I've learned to, you know, leave certain situations. So, you know, is everybody going to do the thing that I'm doing exactly how I am? No, but they can do their part. I'm the one that's like, you know, helping, uh, you know, minorities, women and veterans, someone else can help the LGBTQ community, somebody else can help, you know, the uh, neurodivergent community, right? I can't do it all, but I can fix what I can fix. And I can do what I can do. Uh, every little bit helps every little bit helps. And even if I don't get to, you know, satisfy and do everything that I can in this life, uh, you know, this lives on, I inspire somebody else to do something similar or take that and, uh, and build upon it, right, or create their own thing. I hope I hope a lot of people copy my idea. I hope a lot of people go out there and do that, right? It just makes the world a better place. I don't care. Yeah. Like, let's, <laughs> my end goal is helping people. At the end of the day, that's what my end goal is. And it's going to happen because I've already seen it, right? And I'm yeah. seeing it happen every day. We're getting better every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think all of us have a part to play. Mm -hmm. And most of us do know what we need to do. We just don't do it or we don't have the motivations or we're looking over our shoulders to see what other people are doing and we don't focus. And uh, yeah, I love that you help women because I, I want to keep bringing it up because I was born and raised in a different country and culture, right? And it's like that many, many different countries around the world where women are given roles to play based mm -hmm. on where they are. 
and me having to combine both and seeing, I'm like, holy crap, my doctor's a woman. Uh, oh my gosh, this woman is a construction worker and uh, women went to the moon and women oh, oh, oh this and that. It's something I've had to adapt to. It's not mm-hmm. to make women small. It's the smallness of the minds of culture where I'm from, if that makes sense. Definitely. Right. And it goes back to the thing that we talked about with diversity in the, you know, earlier in the podcast, it's like, sometimes it just takes seeing somebody in a position to really Mm -hmm. make that light bulb go off and be like, wow, that means I could do it. Or I could do something that I've been trying to go after, because if this person, you know, could do this, that means that I could do, you know, that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think it's, you know, really important to elevate as many voices as possible to talk, you know, and talk about this ad nauseum, because it's, uh, it's still happening to this day. There's lots of discriminatory pro- policies in all kinds of different countries, all kinds of different cultures, all kinds of different governmental, you know, rules and regulations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And for people to say that it doesn't exist, they're putting their head in the sand like an ostrich. These things do <laughs> exist and we still need to talk about it and not only talk about it, but now create action, mm-hmm. right? It's not enough to just think about it. It's that manifestation without perspiration stays in your imagination. It's mm-hmm. not enough to just talk about it. You got to do it. Mm-hmm. whatever it is, it, one little thing, take that first step to do it. And then it's, you know, then it's moving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how are you inspiring your son uh, through your company? Yeah. So uh, he is now like, you know, kind of trying to try his hand at his entrepreneurship too. Right. So like we live here in Denver, Colorado, we get cold weather. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he wanted to get a dog. And so I told him, <laughs> Hey, I don't want a dog, uh, you know, go out there and, and start your own business, picking up dog poop, because that's what you're going to do. Cause I'm not picking up the dog. You are, <laughs> you want the dog, you're going to pick up its, right. So like start a business and see if that's what you like, like, cause you're going to do it. So see if it's something that you can continue to do. Right. And you can raise funds. So then you can get the dog of your dreams. Right. And then, like I said, we get weather. So then when it's, you know, snowy here, he turns it into snow shoveling. Right. And so he can create his own path to success. Um, and the latest endeavor is he wanted to start a YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, you know, he's been bugging me for three years now to start this YouTube channel. <laughs> and I said, finally, yeah. let's set some parameters around it. Let's make it safe. Like you're a kid. So your, your face can't be on it. Your name can't be on it. You don't talk to it, you know, like just create the content. And, uh, you know, so he, he created his YouTube channel. He's been making these little videos that are, uh, you know, clipped together with images of football players and stuff like, cause as he's really into sports and, uh, you know, in the background, I've been reaching out and getting people to subscribe to his, 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 <laughs> his YouTube channel. That's and so, so like cool. now he's got like 130 followers, subscribers. Right. Oh, and like, wow uh it's it it was important for me just to go back to like you know why i support women you know businesses and all kinds of other things is having someone that believes in you means everything right because when you're starting something whether it could be a business whether it could be your own dream of going to school or doing whatever having somebody to support you even sometimes to just literally just be there to pat you on your back means everything so you know, I went in the background, I hit up a bunch of people saying, hey, I'll subscribe to my son's channel, you know, this, yeah. this, this. Yeah. and just watching his face light up, you know, and he's like, dad, I got seven subscribers, dad, I got 12, you know, and like watching it go And this, this morning, and I was like, where you at? He's like, I got 132. And I was like, see, all you got to do is start, you got to start and the universe is going to take care of the rest, but you got to believe that you can do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's uh, where part of my journey comes through is <laughs> for the longest time, I didn't believe in myself. I had to be, you know, I had my, my mother and my father were great, you know, resources for me, but you know, the rest of the world, you know, they're going to crap on you. They're going to tell you, you can't do something, you know, right. And you have to find that motivation within yourself. Mm-hmm. And we have other people on your team. It makes it easier. I mean, I got a tattoo on my forearm. Mm-hmm. It says FBH DBL stands for fueled by hate. And driven by love because my entire life, people were telling me that I wouldn't be this, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't be able to complete X or Y, right? And I would take that negative energy and I would just like think about the passion that I had for whatever I was doing at the time or what I was doing for my family, uh, you know, and, and, and transmuted that negative energy into something so positive. And so for me, it's like, 
I do the same thing with my son. I was like, don't worry about the hate. There's going to be a million people out there. They're going to hate on <laughs> anything you're going to do. Yeah. You're going to find a lot of people that are going to try to tell you, but those are the people that are scared. They're afraid of their own success and they're afraid of your success because they're afraid of your power. They see the power inside you and they're going to try to knock you down. Stay away from those people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's not easy. I've had to face that and mm -hmm. I'm like, watch me. That's all. <laughs> watch me. <laughs> hey, if you're watching me, you're a fan. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, <laughs> you're already subscribed to me. I like, and you know, part of me, I like, I like the, the people that don't like me. I'll probably yeah. almost like them more than the people that do like me because the people that don't like me talk about me more than the people that do. Mm, that's you know, true. somebody's going to see this podcast and is going to be talking all kinds of crazy stuff about the things that I'm saying, how I carry myself, how I present myself good continue to do that <laughs> because that energy i use that energy to create beauty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah tell me about the logo behind you that's an octopus yeah yeah so uh op opus right sounds like octopus yeah. um i was watching a documentary a couple years ago on octopus and like learning a little bit more about they're just like such interesting creatures mm -hmm. um you know they've got basically nine brains right each one of their tentacles uh -huh has its own nervous system. And then they have three hearts, right? So lots of heart, lots of intelligence, lots of adaptability. Um, and so that's where the logo kind of came from because there's, you know, eight different divisions of the company. There's eight different tentacles, right? And just, uh, I thought it was just a really cool <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. logo to to create. And it, you know, it, it, it just kind of worked. I was like, opportunity for you is an opportunity for us. Opulus, octopus. Hey, cool. I just kind of stumbled across <laughs> it. You know, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes, uh, you know, they say brilliance happens in the moment. And like, also yeah. sometimes uh, it was a bad idea because most people are afraid to, they're like, opus, uh, like uh -huh. they're like afraid. <laughs> So when you make up your own word, right, as all words are made up, uh, it's really important to like say it over and over and over again until people understand what it, <laughs> that's it works. Really cool. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so Dante, what do you want my listeners to get out of today's episode? Yeah, a couple of different things. Uh, so number one, the power of persistence, right? Like I said, manifestation without perspiration stays in your imagination, Go out there and do it. Don't be afraid. Don't wait for it to be perfect. Don't get analysis paralysis. Create your minimum viable product. Create like the very minimum of what you need to do to get the thing going and just go for it. And don't be afraid to reinvent it. Don't be afraid to change it. Don't be afraid to quote unquote fail. These are things that are going to happen in life regardless. So that's the number one thing is just believe in yourself and get that going. Number two, if you are a business owner, you are interested in becoming a business owner, definitely want you to, you know, go to opus.com, O-P-P-U-O-U-S.com slash marketplace and download the, uh, the marketplace for free. It's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of energy and investment in growing and scaling your business through technology. And then if you are an aspiring entrepreneur or, or an entrepreneur, go to, you know, Facebook. We've got a Facebook group with nearly 16,000 businesses nationwide that we're helping grow and scale. Yeah. Lots of tools and resources that we have in there that we drop on the daily. We're doing, you know, uh, almost like TED style talks where we, you know, educate people on different technology platforms and different ways to to scale their business, whether it's through grants or whether it's through, you know, different funding mechanisms or, you know, whatever. And that is called uh, supporting small businesses and local businesses everywhere. If you search that on Facebook, you'll find us there. Join the community. There's 16,000 of us growing every single day to to just help and learn and, and maintain that. So that's what yeah, I would say. Yeah, That's awesome. Would you consider what I'm doing a business? I would, I would, um, you know, there's a, uh, anything, anything can be viewed as a business or a relationship, right? So starting your own podcast, doing your own podcast is a business, right? You're, you're creating a product, which is the podcast itself, right? And you've got customers, which are your subscribers, mm -hmm. right? And so reaching them and teaching them and doing that. So then the, 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 you know, the last part is monetizing it, right? Is turning that into, to make it a true business as it has to make money, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, how do you do that in the podcast world? through affiliate links, right? Uh, through sponsorships, right? There's a, uh, 
you know, reach out to businesses and see if they'll sponsor you so you can, you know, get better production values or editing or, or the music that you talked about to open up the thing, uh, you know, maybe get, you know, affiliate, you know, links and stuff like that. So when people download a certain software or buy a certain product, then you get a percentage of it. Right. And that's how you, uh, you kind of scale it. That's uh that's how you turn what you're doing. Cause you've already done a number of podcasts already. Right. So you've yeah. got a really great following. You've got great listeners. Thank you. Listeners. You're, you know, keeping, <laughs> keeping this, uh, you know, yeah. this dream alive, uh, yeah. you know, for Bernadette and, and for other people, you know, just like her that are trying to get into the space. Um, yeah. And then you take it from, you know, Apple podcasts and Spotify and YouTube, and you got it all kinds of different places. You can create, yeah. you can create really great things. I I'm, I'm watching it happen on a, you know, a day-to-day basis, right. Of people, uh, you know, create these really, really great ways to, to create a sustainable living and do what they love to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also I think sometimes fear hold people back. That was my case for a while. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> fear is uh fear is something that definitely can can definitely keep you down it is also something that can motivate you as well right like i talked about when i started this i i was uh, afraid to do it and then finally i just used fear to transmute it yeah. and, and push myself to that next level and so it's really important how we talk to ourselves internally our internal dialogue because the other part of that is is an understanding that you're worthy so before every bed uh before night I tell my son to tell me who he is, not, you know, attributes, but who are you? And he says, I am powerful. I am strong and I am worthy. And I think it's really important for you to understand as a person that you are worthy. You have to believe that first before you can ever get anywhere in life. You have to, you know, own that part that you are going to be, you know, successful in whatever it is that you are. You know, you were born on this earth to do, to serve some kind of purpose. And if you're not dead, that means you're already successful. There's lots of ways to die every day. So if you're not dead, you're supposed to be here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, keep it moving, keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Last question for you before we wrap Mm -hmm. up. I asked every guest that I try to, when I don't forget, (laughs) what is the meaning of life for you? Uh, the meaning of life is to experience, uh, you know, do as much as you can when you can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, second to that, I think, and also in tandem to that is also to share mm-hmm. that experience, right? And share in what you do. Uh, you know, I said it a couple of times, I live in abundance mind state. So when I have something, I give something very easily, you know, and that's, uh, that's, that's how I'm built. And I think that's how the world should be. And, uh, you know, it maybe is a pie in the sky idea, but, like I said, the more people that do something, the more acceptable we become. So I'm I'm making it acceptable to give while growing. So do good while doing great. Yeah. Well, Dante, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for picking my brain. Because <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just I've always been fascinated with that kind of stuff, but I don't understand it. I'm, yeah. I'm on the artistic side. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. I appreciate everything you do. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me and thank you so much to your listeners and subscribers. Mm -hmm. It means the world to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.